any problem can go on the market. They result from the better or worse anticipation. The second error is to think that price protection necessarily hampers production. It is certainly true that due to the increase in real debt, bankruptcies are likely to increase. However, the bankruptcy only implies a change in the ownership of the means of production. The means of production themselves do not disappear. When the bankruptcy, the creditors will take the versions of the company will take over the means of production. Thus, while the ownership changes, production must not necessarily change. Just depends on the new owners what to do with production. If the investment project is used with the fiber, they may just maintain production as it was, even though the ownership has changed. If the project is not a viable, of course, they will be necessarily re adaptions. The bankruptcy are also important because they might actually bring down, down the pressure of the bank system. Because there's an increase in real debt, their bankruptcies, their loans of the bank will go bad, there are losses for the bank, solids are going to the bank. Dollars in the solvency rise can be bank runs, bank panic, which could lead to the quality of protection of the bank system. The third error of the price protection on this in the idea that somehow price stability would be some, something very important in itself. And obviously, price inflation is not a possibility, therefore, price inflation would be bad, and the price instability cost of inflation would result in a degradation in tariff. And this is erroneous, however, as well, because entrepreneurs can calculate without a problem the profitability of the project when prices fall, or when they rise, or when they are saved. They just have to anticipate this price. Price movement. As we all know, in the IT industry, the seed production, for example, prices have been falling for these decades, and there is not, nothing to be like a calculation of care. The first error about price station exists in the reasoning that price station is necessary for unemployment as wages would be rigid downwards. However, entrepreneurs can certainly bid down wages in face of the expected price situation. It is true, of course, also that governments can prevent them from doing this by instance, by granting privileges to labor unions. In this case, however, it's not the price situation that causes the unemployment, but the government intervention that prevents wages from falling. And indeed, government interventions can always cause too high wages and therefore unemployment, independent of the general movement of prices. Government interventions in the labor market can cause unemployment when prices are rising or falling, or they are safe. By granting privileges to the labor unions, labor unions can always cause too high wages. Actually, one advantage of price inflation might be pressures to abolish these barriers to prices and to increase, in order to increase price flexibility. This is so because the involuntarily unemployed might actually protest against interventions in the labor market. The last error lies in the famous liquidity trade argument. In this argument, it's argued that price inflation is horrible because it can put the economy into a liquidity trap. Economists like Lars Benson and Paul Krugman are lancing this, this argument. To, to show the argument in a liquidity trap, nominal interest rates are close to zero. There are ongoing inflationary expectations, which result in high real interest rates. And as a consequence of the high real interest rates, entrepreneurs do not invest anymore. The solution became a massive in such a situation. 
Would be a cost reduction of the interest rates, but as they are close to zero, the interest rates cannot fall anymore. Then zero now, they cannot fall below zero. So the central bank is left without ammunition. Well, it would be, of course, a the nightmare. The central bank would be left without ammunition. <laughs> Yet, this ability to check argument is erroneous. Then there are deflationary expectations as the entrepreneurs can deal with, with investing in the prices for. That is, they try to build down the prices. Thus, the, factor, the price of the factor of production can fall immediately. And for entrepreneurs, investment decisions, the differences between buying costs and selling proceeds is important. So, deflationary expectations per se are not important. Because costs might fall even faster than proceeds are expected to fall. Thus, also with inflationary expectations and investments. Where someone might ask, well, what happens if not fail to build down prices? Well, in this case, resources will be just used in other ways. They will not be aggressive, but then we will be used in other ways as better by the market, market, market system. So, to come to the conclusion, uh, inflation is not some, something inherently, inherently bad for the economy. Its main impact is a redistribution of wealth and income that is certainly disfavoring the economic, economic elites of the day. But its main effect is not necessarily temporary or productive. So, by now we have, we have only spoken about the consequences of uh, inflation. But to answer our question, if we need to feel inflation, we might also look on the costs of the foreign price. For example, growth inflation, the inflation caused by an increase in economic growth, would be needed to feel that one. I don't think so, because most of us would claim the economic growth is something good. The price of inflation might also caused by bank credits, inflation and recession. Actually, this kind of deflation might speed up the recovery during the reset by speeding up the liquidation of malware. And as I have indicated before, it might bring down the process of action of the banking system. So, do we need to be that? No, I don't think so either. It might actually work for it. Yet, another cause for price inflation is the government intervention. So there might be, for example, coercive monetary inflation, collecting taxes, and in some, in some ways or another, reduce the money supply up. Or price control inflation, that the government is simply decreed, decreed price for. Obviously, this should must be considered bad and must be feared, this kind of government intervention. So if we turn to our initial question, do we need to feel inflation? The answer would be well, yes, when it is forced by government. Otherwise, we might actually think that it has positive effects. So a price inflation point of 